allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, welcome everybody to the uh, general <coughs> session, June 5th, 1 p.m. here at Town Hall. Welcome to the folks on Zoom. Um, I'll ask the Secretary and Treasurer Pell to call the roll, please. Scott A. M. Harwitz, President. I am here. William Pell, Secretary of Treasurer, is present. Edward J. Warner, Jr. Present. Ann Walker. Here. And William Parrish. Present. We're all here. All right, just so the public is aware we'll be having a work session on June 26, 2023 at 9.30 a.m., followed by our regular meeting on the same day at 1 p.m. <coughs> we do have discussions. <coughs> South Shore Estuary Reserve, Long Island South Shore Estuary Reserve. We have Jeremy Campbell here, and we have the famous Jennifer Street here as well, back for a cameo appearance for moral support of the trustees. Thanks for coming. I'd like to give you the floor so that you could uh, educate us all. If you're ready to go. Bear with me. I just got my notes on my laptop here. So. so thank you for uh, having me today. Uh, thank Ann uh, Welker for, for the invite, um, for the opportunity to come talk to you guys and you know, provide a little education about the Long Island South Shore Estuary Reserve. So as I can see if this works. Yeah. So. Um, so Long Island South Shore Estuary Reserve um, is a state estuary program. As you may know, we have the on Long Island, the Long Island Sound Study on the North Shore, um, the Peconic Estuary Program, which I believe uh, you all are pretty familiar with as well, which kind of abuts the South Shore Estuary Reserve. Um, and those are both federal programs run through, uh, go through EPA, the National Estuary Program. And the South Shore Estuary Reserve is with um, state programs through the New York State Department of State, our Office of um, Planning, Development, and Community Infrastructure. Um, as you can see on the map, the, the boundary is, you know, all the way to the west um, abuts New York City uh, out in the town of Hempstead and goes all the way just to the east of Shinnecock Bay here in the town of Southampton. Uh, it's about 70 miles long um, all together, encompassing all six towns, you know, parts of all six towns along the way, Hempstead, Oyster Bay, Babylon, Islip, Brookhaven, and Southampton. And just and um, another um, important note: um, our money and funding comes through the, the state budget um, through the Environmental Protection Fund. We have a specific line for the South Shore Estuary Reserve. Um, as of two years ago, we were getting 900,000 a year. Um, last year, that was bumped up to a million. And then this year in the current budget, um, we are now receiving an appropriation of $2 million. So with a lot of work with the state legislators um, and some of our stakeholders within the, within the estuary, they've done a lot of work to try to get our funding levels up so we can you know, provide some services and um, implement our, our CMP. That's great. Um, so, as I said, the comprehensive management plan, um, September of last year, um, the update for our CMP, the first one was completed in 2001, um, so quite a few years later, more than 20, we you know, updated that CMP. Um, it is available on our DOS website, and one of the, the, the big updates, um, not only just updating the, you know, the things that are already done and all the new emerging issues, um, were it was the um, addition of a chapter on resiliency, which you know after Superstorm Sandy in 2012 was a very um, vital addition to to the CMP to really encompass a lot of the issues that are currently happening on um, you know Long Island and the South Shore in particular. Um, just a uh, you know rough um, kind of how much money has been spent since the uh, the first CMP in 2001. Um, and these cover each of the chapters of the, the CMP, you know, water quality, living resources, estuary economy, public use and enjoyment, resilience, education, outreach, and stewardship. You know, since 2001, more than 650 million for uh, more than 450 projects. So that's a, a good chunk of money, and that comes from both um, federal, state, and local funding. 
some of the projects that uh, you know that we've you know, worked on um, in 2017, uh, we awarded 16 uh, local assistance grants for over 600,000. Uh, um, those went for implementation of the comprehensive management plan. Very general. The grants were up to fifty thousand um, dollars. We are hoping that uh, potentially to, to do the, another round of that program again. Um, 2018, um, we completed a benthic survey uh, for um, uh, submerged aquatic vegetation. Um, as a result of that, we came up with a 50% loss of <coughs> uh, seagrass within the South Shore estuary. Previously, that was around 20,000 acres. In 2002, when we did the previous survey, um, and uh, we're looking at about 10,000 acres as of 2018. That obviously about five years ago, so that number may have gone up or down, most likely down a little bit. And last year, um, working with uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension, um, we have a $1.3 million project um, looking at blue carbon seagrass restoration, you know, partly to look at being able to capture carbon in seagrass um, and also looking at trying to you know, restore a, a valuable habitat within the South Shore Estuary. And, and I think everyone knows a valuable resource here in the town of Southampton, the Shinnecock Bay, and, and, and Mariches and, and elsewhere. Um, resource we feel we need to start looking at restoring as well as other options um, for uh, maintaining that critical habitat. Um, through our um, small, small grant pro uh, program, local assistance program, uh, we funded, these are some of the things that we funded through there. Uh, town of Islip, Shellfish Hatchery, we funded two bioreactors. Um, and Town of Hempstead, their Living Shorelines, a community oyster restoration effort. Um, <coughs> um, <coughs> through the Department of State's local waterfront revitalization program in Nassau County, we funded the South Shore Blue Way. Um, and similarly, um, in Suffolk County uh, a few years ago, through LWRP program, we funded the um, Suffolk County Blue Way. So we have a continuous um, Blue Way. Both, you know, they work with Nassau County to um, try to incorporate that. So um, that's one of the, uh, you know, looking at open, you know, public access um, to the water. This is one of the you know, great things that we've uh, been able to accomplish through, you know, uh, the local waterfront revitalization program in our office. Um, <clears throat> Many of our uh, stakeholders, um, CTUC Environmental Association, um, does a lot of work with, and, and Suffolk County uh, with fish passage projects, um, Suffolk County Subwatershed Wastewater Plant, of course, and then in Nassau County, the, the work to reduce nitrogen from the Nassau County Bay Park with their Bay Park uh, Diversion Project, um, eliminating uh, nitrogen to the, to the South Shore Estuary. Um, just getting to some of our, you know, some of the involvement with my, my staff, um, some educational programs. Um, uh, <clears throat> you know, our, the staff um, interact, you know, have interacted with the public through outreach and educational programs, increasing awareness for the South Shore Estuary. Um, you know, one of the programs uh, they've taken part in is with on the left, the uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension of Nassau County Marine Mini Camps. Um, they taught students about uh, different coastal marine species through sailing and nature walks. And on the right is with Massapequa High School's Environment De Environmental Day. Um, staff presented students um, in grades 10 through 12 on horseshoe crab biology, importance of horseshoe crabs to the local environment, and ways students can get involved in citizen science through horseshoe crab monitoring. Um, also, um, we've worked with the town of Brookhaven and the <coughs> Day in the Life program, um, which is DEC, Brookhaven, Brookhaven National Lab and the Pine Barrens Commission on, you know, getting kids out and we work with the town of Brookhaven to get them out on a boat to do some water sampling as part of the Day in the Life of a River program. Um, it's a great way to get kids out and interested in, you know, water quality sampling and, and other habitat and understanding the environment and understanding the, the the watersheds and, and estuary that they live in. Um, horseshoe crab monitor now with Coronel Copper Extension in uh, New York State DEC. Um, as you can see in the lower middle picture, um, 
and uh, Welker joined us. I think your backs to us in that picture, but uh, we're um, we got a site down on Meadow Lane um, that my staff have been are partnering with Pecani Baykeeper, um, and it's a very you know productive <coughs> site. A lot of you can see a lot of horseshoe crabs in a very you know we feel very uh, worthwhile um, resource to be you know helping monitor with the other sites in, on Long Island. Um, my staff also uh, with Sea Tuck Environmental Association uh, do owl wife and American eel monitoring uh, in a few locations in Suffolk County. Um, this usually starts our spring and then we kind of end it with the horseshoe crab monitoring. It's probably their favorite time of year to be out um, and to be at work so they get to go out and uh, do some monitoring. <clears throat> and uh, here's the contact info. I uh, wanted to keep it uh, for myself and Sally Kellogg um, and our office is in Hopog. Um, so if you guys have any questions, I tried to keep it short so we could, Perfect. there could be some questions and I'm sure there probably will be. As far as the LY run that are, is in the Peconic River, have you been monitoring any of the new uh, ladders that have been placed in there or they're not working yet, like Edwards Avenue and those? Um, I haven't had a chance to speak with the Peconic Estuary Program and, and talk to them about where where things are there. I know they also just announced the one right near their, uh, across the street from their office. I had saw, I, um, I also sit on the Peconic um, Estuary Management Committee so I was out at a meeting um, a month and a half ago, right after that was, you know, right about the time the, the owl wife were running, there was a, yeah. you know, a lot of them in there and using it and, and getting Great. through. So, um, you know, and I know we have a, uh, some fish ladders and some structures that have been put on in the Carmen's River um, okay. and, and elsewhere on, you know, you know further, further to the west. So, but I, I'm would have to t you know have a, a conversation with uh, the Pecanic Estuary Program and 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 C talk to see what the successes are there. But I mean the Byron Young uh, fish that looks that's like it was yeah, yeah that one that the Byron Young yes that that is very seems to be very successful. Yes. When I was the day I was there, you know it was early spring, very nice day, and there were you, all you you know plenty of fish just right right I, at the surface flapping around. Same thing I saw. I stopped there a couple times myself, and I yes. experienced that as well. Turtles. Fish and they got they got that old section for the eel yeah. to uh, get. Yeah, that's, a, I mean, that's I, a great that's a great structure, great spot. Absolutely, one of the probably one of the, the locations that get a lot more, um, you know, fish passing through. You know, my staff do. You know, we're out in Patchogue, and we they see some eels, but don't see too many alewife. But it seems to be you know out in the Peconics, there, there tends to be a good good run of you know river herring, so they get an opportunity to see um, see some fish. Yeah, well, one of the areas I always thought would be a good place for a fish ladder was up at Beaver Dam in West Hampton, uh, to Beaver Dam <coughs> Pond in there. I mean, uh, to me, that's a like a missing link. And then you've got the next one, Eastport Pond is another one there. Anyways, along that air stretch of area, it seems to be a, a good conjugating air, uh, site for these LYs. Yeah, and I think um, the, you know, if you, you know, I think in this, uh, the, the Sea Tucks Long Island uh, Diagonals Fish uh, Restoration Strategy, they kind of looked at all the, the tributaries coming in, and I'm, I would guess, I'd have to, I don't have it memorized, but uh, I'd have to go back. I'm sure those are, are some locations that are identified in the, in the strategy. I, I know that in Eastport, the Elvis run up there because we've had uh, enforcement issues with uh, people uh, poaching them in the past, so. Yeah, we don't want to be poached. We want to no, make we, it through. It's a, it's a huge collaborative effort that's required to get these things to, to work out, you yeah. know, from start to finish. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a heavy lift. Yeah, and, and you're working with, you know, impoundments that typically are, you know, a, a bit more of a, you know, you have that impoundment there that you need to put a, you know, a structure on, and then there's the permitting and everything else to yeah. make funding it happen. And funding. You got to find funding, yep. and, you know, and it's not, they're not typically cheap, so. Um, and you have to get buy-in from the community too. Yes, and there's been you know, and there's been looking you know other you know, uh, you know I believe on the Carmens they had looked at potentially dam removal, you know, on some of these you know uh, historical you know ponds that have been dammed up, and that just you know that's a that's an issue with you know the public, and uh, you know the uh, the ponds being there as a recreational fishing and, and, and historical yeah. um, you know. Since people, you know, since this generation's been around, 
so it's very difficult to you can't just go in and you know, be able to remove dams so we have to go with the, the structures to get the fish up and over somehow which probably is I mean if you remove the dams a lot of the avenues that for them to get to like uh, Wildwood Lake and upper in in the Peconics they would almost dry up if we had a very extremely dry a couple of extremely dry seasons the Long mm -hmm. Pond Greenbelt is a prime example Ligony Brook I mean if you have a rainy couple of years you've got water flowing out of there and the LYs can get up there mm -hmm. but without <clears> that there's this dirt there yeah I think that's the you know that's the the the, the issue that we're always going to run into is like do you or do you not you know remove it and then you know and, and you know quite frankly I don't think many dams on the island are going to be be removed just based on um, public you know the public's perception and what yeah. You know, historically, they're they're met and how the and, and the ones in the Peconic River are pretty much simple earth dams that were you know yeah they're very small they're not oh I know I very high. paddled down here many times with my kids on <clears throat> kayaks yeah it's an adventure yeah and I you know I know we have you know the the South Shore you know is you know you go from you know out on the east where it's much <coughs> you know a little bit more room and you know you got a little bit more open space to get into Nassau County much more urban and you have the, the streams coming down sometimes you don't even know where the streams are mm -hmm. and if you drove by and blinked your eye you miss it so yeah um, there is a run in uh Shinnecock Bay and Hetty Creek uh mm -hmm. Halsey Neck Pond yep that's and actually I, what I was just and I address. believe that uh the property has been sold and in some of the or one of the culverts go underneath the driveway in there it's so mm -hmm. I was wondering maybe some help getting some outreach to the new owners to be able to really establish that back as a it is a good run i mean it's probably a, almost an unheard of run but yeah i'd love to have further conversations um about any any concerns on things in the in the south shore estuary and see how we can collaborate and work together did you work at all with the village of patchog with their new living shoreline yes so can you talk a little bit about i that? can so um the village of patchog through our local waterfront revitalization program has received uh, close to five million dollars uh, for that Living Shoreline project. They first had a you know, grant for design. Um, they had followed that up with a grant for construction. That's slightly over two million dollars. Uh, the first one was about two hundred thousand for the design, and then last year they received three million um, <clears throat> because of some as a result of the COVID and construction costs but that that's a um, one of the larger probably one of the largest and not the largest uh, living shorelines on Long Island um, we've done a lot of work with them to get you know with with Jennifer and you know our staff in our office DEC Army Corps of Engineers um, to to get that project to a state that um, it was was doable and permittable um, they're putting rock sills to replace the existing bulkhead in their village in their village park and then it was some low and high marsh um, they're redoing the um, the stream that comes in you know you know turning it back to a tidal stream um, and reform you know reforming that um, channel and, and that project right now is supposed to be done by the end of this month um, <clears throat> the living shoreline the rest of the park will be you know completed um, by the end of the year um, and that that project is you know going along really well it's probably I would say about 70 percent done I think the living shoreline is just about done um, and and any more questions yes um, do you are you familiar with and this may need to be something that we discuss at mm. another point um, we've implemented where we have permitted and Im implemented a couple living shorelines on residential properties and we have a couple more that are coming before the board and one thing that's been an ongoing discussion and we've actually sought expert advice um, as far as the monitoring of them and how they're working and because they're still new basically so we're we're concerned and want to make sure that we have the best projects that are possible for the areas that they're meant to protect so do you have any idea of what the monitoring is or what the arrangement is for the monitoring going forward after the completion of the installation that I do not I would have to 
pass that off to someone else in our office to answer those questions on specifics of monitoring moving forward after installation of the living shoreline project you know i can say that we have a ongoing um coastal um erosion monitoring project underway looking at some living shorelines on on long island and across the state um but you know specifically to post construction of living shorelines i really can't you know comment on that that aspect going forward all right, well, you, we didn't want to put you on the spot, Jennifer. But she, but why she, don't you why don't you step up and come come up to the let's let's get you right sure. up right front and center here. There's um. If you can state your name for the record, so everybody knows who you are. Sure, I'm Jennifer Street with the New York State Department of State Coastal Management Program. Um, so for the for most of the living shoreline projects that we've been reviewing, there's a monitoring and maintenance plan that has to be filed with each project, and typically there's a condition within the DEC and Army Corps permits that require five years maintenance and monitoring on those. Mm -hmm. um, the big difference between the Patchogue project, um, Living Shoreline project, and the ones that we're seeing in West Hampton, there's no solid fill core dune um, in the Patchogue project. It actually converts, it has the rock sills at the location of the previous bulkhead, then the property has been sloped back for high and low marsh plantings and then there's actually bio swales that have been installed landward of that um, and then an accurate walkway between that and the park um, so there's no no solid structure between the, the living shoreline and the mm -hmm. yeah that's a significant difference yep. for sure um, I haven't been there yet but it's on my radar because I wanted to see but I know it's still a work in progress but we mm -hmm. are very interested in it but um, it's commendable that you guys have been involved with yeah. that for sure because it's a great project and it took a long time yeah um the village i believe do they still have their live feed up? yeah they have the, a, a live feed uh um discover patch of that you can com, watch yeah. i believe okay and that that's an opportunity in a way to they have Monitor. two cameras um on it, one facing you have to go to the mic <laughs> so so sorry they uh they have two cameras uh, it's discoverpatchog.com i believe um <clears throat> and you go up into the shoreline shorefront park um <clears throat> living shoreline link with you know camera facing east and another one kind of facing southeast um a little creek you can't see the creek you could until they turn the camera but um it's a very good opportunity to see what the sills and and they are at a point where it's graded back to the the walkway and one piece that jennifer met, uh, left out is with the three million dollars that they just received they're also going to treat the stormwater coming in off the village streets so not just the stormwater within the park um, that's going through the bioswales but they're going to do some treatments within the um, village for those those streets coming in because there's a i forget the number but a number of stormwater pipes that come directly through the park and discharge directly into the bay which doesn't help if we're doing all this and we're not going to treat the stormwater that's coming in those pipes so um <clears throat> it's, a, it's a tremendous project and, and if you guys uh if anyone needs to find that link they can feel free to reach out i'll leave a couple cards behind them that'd be great my email yeah. and that'd be great thank you the thank only you. other quick question i have is there is an area um where there it, it's another municipal location and the, presently there th there's rock gavions and cages um maybe at some point if you guys would take a look at that with us to see what might be um that was done how long ago in the past eight to ten years probably about but it's becoming problematic as far as years. 15. Yeah, we'll like that, yeah. Yeah. So there, there might be now more um, better solutions, mm -hmm. you know, like things have changed and evolved and grown. And I just think that that, that area might be something that we, there, there's, it's um, quite fertile horseshoe crab spawning habitat <coughs> and it, it could be a really good project maybe if we were to look at it. Yeah, initially together. there was a bulkhead there, and then the bulkhead was removed. The rock gabions were put there, and it was supposed to have sand maintenance on and behind the rock gabions, which hasn't been done. So they scoured out 
and whenever you get a lunar tide and a northeasterly wind, the horseshoe crabs overtop the rock gabions. They have hundreds of horseshoe crabs back there laying eggs. The tide goes out, and then they're trapped there. So it's it's become problematic. So it, it was initially thought it was going to be a good project. If the sand behind it was maintained. The elevation would be such that the horseshoe crabs wouldn't lay their eggs. But it's actually created a swale behind it where it's moist and it's you know they can lay their eggs and and they get trapped there. So, so and I know uh, I've advocated as a bayman and I've reached out to Marty Shea, who's the chief environmental analyst, it's for him to ask you know the, uh, the FIMS program because they're involved in this that's involved in this area too but the problem with the FIMS pro program they want hardening structures and stuff like that to be remain there and it's a bad idea so maybe in, in this help. case it's not working you know yeah and, that, and Marty has brought that that particular location to my attention yes so you're already on it I've been made aware of it. I need to you know need to have a, a good look at it and maybe have some discussion with some other staff on your, way, on your way back upstate, you go across the Pongquag <laughs> Bridge and you go down Dune Road to Tyana, and then you take the you know West Bay Bridge in West Hampton and get yeah. back on the Sunrise yeah, Highway. We, we have some time this afternoon. We might you should do, do it. Probably a nice day for it. Yeah. yeah. Because is there any possibility that as part of the funding for that, you guys could be helpful with that? Maybe? Could that be looked into? Yeah, there's, there's possibility, yeah. Uh, yeah, not to on put what, you on the spot, but yeah, just yeah, well, we, throwing you know, it out there. It depends on what we were able to you know, come up with if there's something there and then try to identify or see what, what can be done. Well, you, well, thank we'll, you. we'll collaborate with you because it's been problematic. We could, yeah. and look forward to having you know, further discussions with, thank uh, you. with everyone here. Yes, thank you both very Please. much for making and the trip yes. today. Yeah, we thank you for the invitation, it. and mm -hmm. I'll leave these business cards for you. You give them to James and we'll get them. I only got four of them, so. James, we're good sharers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, James will give you a map and figure right. it out. Thank you. Thank okay. you very thank much. You, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's move on to um, public portion. Is there anybody here that would like to address the board in public portion or anybody on Zoom? Charles would like to put their hand up and address the board. All right. Nobody Thanks, here. Charles. Thank you. Let's move on to the applications for permits. The Board of Trustees hereby waives a public hearing on the following applications because it has been determined that the following projects do not raise a significant degree of public interest or public input is not needed to aid the decision-making process. Trustee Resolution 2023-162. This is a renewal application for 5 Quag Street, Village of Quag, tax map 902-7-1-1.2. I recommend its renewal. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Seconded by Pell and Warner. So I have trustee resolution 2023-163. Also a renewal application uh, for 27 Marlin Roadies, tax map number 900-384-3-14. Go <coughs> for a second. Second, second on that. Seconded by... Uh, Trustees Pell, Warner, and Welker. Um, all in favor? All right. Aye. 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 Okay. Trustee Resolution 2023-164. Renew application for Lake Agwam Conservative. Permit number GP00140, Lake Agwam Conservative. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. So that's for, just to be clear, that's for water lily harvesting. Correct. Yes. For up to two events during the growing season, May to September. Yes. Trustee Resolution 2023-165, application with Southampton Reposa LLC, 85 down East Village of Southampton, tax map 904-12-1-1. Dish 1.2 body of water, Heady Creek. Second that. Second it. Trustee Warner, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Trustee Resolution 2023-166, application for Charles Seaman, 27A Gardeners Lane, Hampton Bay, Suffolk County, tax map 900-323-1-34, body of water, Penny Pond. We went through this at work session. I recommend its approval. Second. Second it. Trustee Powell, all in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Resolution 2023-167, application for Anthony Recchio, 26 Far Pond, uh, Shinnecock Hills, New York, Suffolk County, tax map 
272-1-44, Body of Water, Middle Pond. We went through this at work session. I recommend it's approval. Second. Second, Trustee Pell, all in favor? All right. All right. Trustee Resolution 2023-168, Application for Growley Pond, LLC, 471 Sag Road, Village of Sagaponic, Suffolk County Tax Map, 908-3-2-3, Body of Water, Sag Pond. This is um, for a um, permit, uh, um, the cutting of 1,000 feet of Phragmite, seaward of Mean High Water, um, <coughs> and I'd like to recommend its approval. Second. Second. Trustee Warner, all in favor? Aye. Trustee Resolution 2023-169, Modification and Renewal for the first of GP000172, Hidden Cove Marina, Inc., 51 Pine Neck Avenue in Noyak, Suffolk County Tax Map 900-5-1-14.1, Body of Water, Ruggs Creek. This is um, for the Hidden Cove Marina replacement of docks and just to um, tighten up some of the language within this. I'd like to recommend its approval. I'll second that. Second, Trustee Warner. All in favor? Uh, All right. right. 2023-170, this is a renewal application of GP000401 LPK Island Real Estate LLC 20 Cricket Path, Remsenburg, Spionk, New York, Suffolk County Tax Map Number 900-380-1-34.3, Body of Water, Seatuck Cove. Uh, we've had this in work session and I've moved to have Second. it. Seconded by Trustee Pell. All in favor? All right. All right. Uh, trustee Resolution 2023-171, Renewal Application of GB, GP000379, Gabrielle and Nicole Fromer, 2019 Trust, 375 Dune Road, Village of West Hampton Beach, Suffolk County Tax Map Number 905-18-2-1.5, Body of Water, Atlantic Ocean. Second. Second. Trustee Powell, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Trustee Resolution 20-20, 20, 20, 172 it's a modification application of GP000472, Christopher J. Witt, 125 Temple Avenue, Flanders, New York, Suffolk County map, Tax Map Number 900-123-1-5.2, Body of Water, Reeves Bay. Second. Second, Trustee Powell, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we have Trustee Resolution 2023-173 for Central Purchasing and Contracts Compliance, authorized the purchase of fleet management services from ARI Automotive Rentals, Inc. Uh, require uh, fleet management services, whereas ARI holds a current New York State contract for fleet management. Under Group 72002, Award Number 23168, Contract Number PS69147, whereas the Board of Trustees Resolution 2023-TRUS-1 requires an authorizing resolution for any expenditure in excess of a thousand. Second. Second to Trustee Powell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have Trustee Resolution 2023-174, authorized expenditure for Far Pond Channel, hydrographic topographic survey, whereas the trustees will obtain a hydrographic survey for a Far Pond Channel for Robert H. Fox, EBA sea level mapping in the amount of $2,995. Second. Seconded, Trustees Parrish and Pell, all in favor? Aye. 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 Trustee Resolution 2023-175 authorizes the President to sign with Fireworks by Garucci, Inc. for barge anchoring in Shinnecock Bay. We've done this in the past, so I recommend this approval. I need a second. 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 Seconded, Trustee Pell, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Trustee <coughs> Resolution 2023-176, Budget and Financing, Warrant Number 10 of the year of 2023. Approved recommendation review from the town, comp control that following vendor payment warrant nine will be approved the amount of $56,461.08. Be ready, $5,075. Cold Spring Fish Hatchery, $5,000. Joseph Lavada, $2,150. PSEG of Long Island, $15.92. 
Riverhead Building, $2,472.14. Town of Southampton, $40,685. Mason, $596.05. Judge Lovato, $400. Town of Southampton, FedEx, $66.97. A total of $56,461.08. I'll second that, Billy. Second, Trustee Warner, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay, so that can. And I see no walk-ons here, which is good. Is there? I know we've been so busy today between work session and discussions. Is there anything that we've we've left some things out? Like no, we haven't left no, anything I have out. It, I just um, have a few things to add. Updates. I have, yeah, I need something for executive session. Okay. Is there anything prior to going into executive session again? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, updates. First thing I want to say is this coming Friday, June 9th, um, as you know, Shinnecock Bay has been designated a hope spot, and there is an official inauguration on Friday morning at 10 o'clock. There's a ribbon cutting, and I think there's a very famous person that's speaking at that, perhaps. Yes, are you speaking? Are. No, yes. you. Yes, I'm gonna, I was asked to speak. <laughs> Great. So, yes. but, so there's We're, one very famous person that's speaking this, at the no. ribbon cutting in it, the morning. Sent everybody. But, was it? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll resend it. Resend it. Yes. Yeah. We, we're in the afternoon, in the a there, there are a multitude of activities during the day, one of which is a boat ride, but that's sold out, so sorry. Um, but in the afternoon at 4 o'clock, and this is for the edification of the public as well, Sylvia Earle is coming to speak. So Sylvia Earle is a renowned marine scientist. She's the first woman that was ever um, inaugurated into the National Geographic Explorers Club and she's speaking at four at Southampton um, campus of Stony Brook University and tickets for that are available on www.explorers.org events wow slash 23. Um, that should be a, a pretty great uh, talk. She is sought after as a lecturer. She has a wealth of experience and it's an honor that she's on Eastern Long Island. Um, I also just transitioning, um, Meacox Inlet and Sag Pond, um, we have piping plover nests at both locations. Um, at both locations <coughs> we have applied to open those cuts. However, we are not permitted to do so because of the presence of plovers. James, do you want to give us a little bit of an update as to where we stand with both SAG and Meacox? Yeah, so um, Meacox, uh, one of the nests that's in the immediate vicinity of the channel uh, has hatched uh, on June 3rd. So estimated day would be 25 to 35 days, which brings us 35 days to July 7th. Um, that's, you know, if the chicks survive, hopefully. Um, nest number 37, estimated hatch date, it's the further one, but it's still within the 300 meters as per uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife and DEC. Um, well, estimate hatch date is 620. Uh, for SAG, um, the first nest in the immediate vicinity is uh, estimated hatch date of 66, which should be soon. Um, and then the next nest is 68 for estimated hatch date. So okay. we're still standing by all nests are still intact other than the one that hatched so okay because we are looking at um, the pond level for sag being well above opening so hopefully then we can open at the end of the month if the hatches are successful and um, the fledge the fledges are also successful another hope right. spot yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Another hope spot. So for both Meacox and Zag. And then just the last thing real quickly is um, we've been working towards, um, thanks to um, CPF water quality funding work in Mill Pond and Watermill. Um, there is beginning next week, um, if everything goes smoothly this coming week, um, there will be an electrofishing survey to determine the amount of carp in Mill Pond, and then following that, there will also be some carp removal. So that um, is another good step for Mill Pond. And then we're in the process of setting up um, the water lily removal in 
probably July, probably second to third week of July. Then which would be perfect, right? So, yep, yeah. So working towards um, the decreasing the nutrient load to, to and within Mill Pond um, because Mill Pond is as heavily impacted by harmful algal blooms as Lake Agawam, but Lake Agawam just gets a lot more press. So that's it for me, that's unless good. anybody has any questions. No, I know that we have some additional. Right, one thing. Uh, yep, one, one thing more. Two weeks ago, we did fish stocking in the local lakes and ponds within the town. Um, just letting the people in the public know that there are fish there to catch now. So um, just a heads up. Fish on. Maybe. Okay. Is there anything, uh, any, anything else? You know, you're all <coughs> aware there's been uh, dead whale <coughs> washed up on the beach. So logistics were worked with uh, everybody involved, Shinnecock Nation involved, federal government, the state, every county, everybody was involved in facilitating that. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of whales that have been coming up dead this year, right? And uh, Was there discussion about the length of time um, in order for the necropsy in order to reveal the cause of death. They were there, Bob, it, Mr. Yeah. DiGiovanni was there. I mean, they were there with their team, obviously. I don't know what the dates are. He'll certainly give us whatever information is necessary. You know, everybody was, was engaged in a collaborative effort, you know, to deal with that, the constables, you know, everybody. The, the thing is, is that I know it's not the worst year, but it's, the trend is not great in terms of what has been occurring. Uh, with the with the whale, so we, we may be in for more, uh, unfortunately, as the time goes and, on. And it was buried in the beach. As was is protocol. Yes, correct. As is correct pro protocol. So. And that was a humpback whale. Yes, very large. Right. So, there was a, a one to the west as well, outside of the township, obviously, uh, as well, roughly at the same time. All right. So that being said, I guess there's executive session still that has to happen here. Yes, we need to uh, okay. discuss some litigation. Okay. So I will make a motion to adjourn this meeting and go into another executive session for the purposes of discussing litigation. <laughs> Second. Seconded, Trustee Parrish, all in favor? All right. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs>